Hello everyone, this is your host, your friend, your boy, Jet Black, the one and only, here with another exciting video. In this video, I'm going to be playing some AI Dungeon 2. Some AI Dungeon 2. Hope you guys are excited. Shout out to King of Craxels on Discord for paying $14 for this two-hour Jet Starlight non-canon special. If you guys want to sponsor your own videos, feel free to hit me up on Discord and on Cash App. Links in the description below. For more details on that, stay tuned until the end. So without further ado, let me start up the two-hour timer and let's jump into today's AI Dungeon 2 adventure. It's like a feature-length film. Okay, set timer for two hours. The timer has begun. And I'm going to make sure that I'm recording. I am. Cool. You are Jet Starlight. You are a god who has forgotten who you are, been transported to another world, no longer remembers their powers. You are being hunted by General and Zarin, who are both members of the Dark Star Squadron. The Dark Star Squadron is an organization from the world you came from that hunt down and slay gods who weren't naturally born into godhood. General is an eight-foot-tall cyborg with an old man voice. General has powerful talons that he uses to slam and cut his enemies. Zarin is a thin, pale man who is about five foot six inches tall. Zarin's hair is slicked back, he has a thin beard, and he wears a white jacket. Who are you guys, and why are you attacking me? you ask. General, I think he legitimately doesn't remember who we are, says Zarin in a surprised tone of voice. That's perfect. He likely doesn't even remember what he's capable of. Oh wait, he's yelling, my bad. That's perfect. He likely doesn't remember. <laughs> now it sounds too much like Zarin. So the general has an old man voice, uh, and I feel like I took it in the direction of like an old prospector. Um, so that's perfect. But then he has to be yelling. So that's perfect. He likely doesn't even remember what he's capable of. Yells the general as he charges at you with his talons raised. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to dodge roll out of the path of the general's charge. So, because I don't remember what my powers are, and I don't really understand the world that I'm in just yet, um, I guess I'm just going to try to fight them normally. You were successful in dodging the general's charge, the only issue being that this results in you tripping and smashing your head into the stone floor. You are left quite busy and dazed, but the general is determined to take advantage of this by cutting you clean in half. Goodness. So I just got bisected. Um, see, this is the thing about like two hour adventures. It's like, so if I just got cut clean in half, you know, how on earth am I going to like continue the story for like two hours? Um, <laughs> so... At that point, I feel like you just die. So I'm going to ask like general why why do this i don't even remember who you are i don't even remember who i am yeah so it seems like i'm probably gonna die because i just got cut in half so I might as well get some closure. You know what I mean? Ooh. It truly is a shame. You were once the most feared god to ever walk this world. Now you're just an old, broken down, has been, who can't even remember who he is. Mm -mm. Yeah, that's actually really cold. Uh, I'm going to say coldly mocks general. Because, I mean, that's you're talking to, like, a guy you just murdered. And this is going to be, like, the last thing he hears before he dies. <laughs> and you call him an old, broken-down has-been who can't even remember who he is. Also, what a, like, huge boast about like my power to say you are once the most feared god to ever walk this world. Uh, so that's actually kind of interesting. Um, you continue to bleed out and think to yourself, most feared god? 
What godly powers do I possess? Can I use my powers to survive this? Yeah, because it just seems like once the general reveals, hey, like you were a god or whatever, then like that's the point where you go, well, actually, I could have like some powers. It occurs to you that if you are a god, you must have certain powers. You decide to concentrate and attempt to use these powers. You attempt to heal your wounds by closing them up with the power of your mind alone. Okay. Does that work, though? Like, to, because it's not just closing up my wounds. It would be, like, reforming my body after being, like, cut in half. Essentially just, like, regenerating. You concentrate as hard as you can. You can feel your body begin to mend itself, but it's a slow process, and the wraiths are quickly catching up to you. Your mind can't take it anymore, and you pass out from the pain of trying to concentrate so much. The wraiths. What are the wraiths? Let's see. So, I'm going to attempt to wake up. Because I don't really know if I died. Um, but apparently I tried to, like, form my body back together. I wonder if the wraiths are kind of like grim reapers. Like, if they try and, like, hunt your soul or something when you die. You wake... Whoa, wait, what? You awaken in a bed with clean white sheets. You look to your side and see a familiar face dressed in Dark Star Squadron attire. Hmm. Let's see. You immediately react... Fearfully... And say, well, and ask, where am I? You recognize the outfit that the familiar face is wearing as it matches the outfits of the general in Zarin. Considering the fact That general. Also, his name is General, but I always want to call him the General. It's so weird to have someone's name be like a title. Anyways, considering the fact that General sliced you in half earlier, you don't feel like you should trust this mis well, this familiar figure who you have yet to identify. So it's interesting the direction that they took it in. I'm awakening in a bed of clean sheets to see someone dressed in Dark Star Squadron attire. That seems kind of weird. Um, you're aboard the Dark Star. You're perfectly safe here, the familiar figure says in an upbeat tone. Oh, it's upbeat. You're aboard the Dark Star. You're perfectly safe here, the familiar figure says in an upbeat tone. It finally dawns on you to who this person is. It's Zarin. Wait, what? Okay, but now I gotta do it again. Um, I was going for a sinister voice with Zarin, but now I have to do upbeat sinister? You're aboard the Dark Star. You're perfectly safe here, the familiar figure says in an upbeat tone. It finally dawns on you who this person is. It's Zarin. Why are you helping me? I thought you wanted to kill me, you ask. Yeah, that actually is like a perfectly reasonable question. <laughs> they literally did kill you. They like sliced you in half. Well, I guess Zarin didn't. General did. Yeah, but this is actually really weird. And then what was the thing about the wraiths that were trying to hunt me? Also, I'm aboard the Dark Star. Is the Dark Star like a spaceship? Is it like a boat? Am I in like a submarine? Like, where am I? General wanted me to help you. I thought it would be best if I did so, considering you're a fellow god. Zarin says with a smile. A fellow god? See, now I'm like so confused because uh, the Dark Star Squadron, as explained at the beginning, is an organization from the world you came from that hunt down and slay gods who weren't naturally born into godhood. 
So does that imply that General and Zarin are both gods, but they're gods who were naturally born into godhood? I imagine that's not what um, King of Craxels originally wanted for those characters, but I think it's an interesting change-up. Also, that would imply that the General is like a cyborg god. So that's kind of cool. Let's see. Zarin helps you get up, and when he does so, you feel dizzy and lightheaded. You ask Zarin, but why slice me in half and then rescue me from the wraiths? Yeah, like, I don't really understand the purpose of, like, what they're doing. Especially considering the idea that, like, they're gods as well. Seems counterintuitive, like what they're doing. Let's see. So it says quest complete, defeat general. Did we defeat the general? Okay, let's see what happened. I have no idea. Oh, sorry. I had no idea he was going to do that. I would have stopped him had I known. But don't worry. You're safe now. I have to go now and let you recover from your wounds, Zarin says as he gets up to leave. Hmm. You are confused, and you still don't trust Zarin or the Dark Star Squadron. Hmm. You have no idea why the Dark Star Squadron would, like, try to kill you and then save you from the race. You aren't even entirely sure what the wraiths are. You consider for a moment that maybe the wraiths are a common enemy of you and the Dark Star Squadron. Maybe the Dark Star Squadron needs you in order to help fight back against the Wraiths. You know that old saying, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Yeah, because that's, I guess, how I interpret it, right? If they were going to, like, cut me in half and, like, leave me to die, like, only, like, a moment before, um, but then suddenly the wraiths are going to come get me. Um, hold on a second. This is interesting, the direction that they took it in. You make a gamble and hope that Zarin is still in the room. I mean, I saw Zarin, like, get up to leave. Did I, like, get lost in thought, and now I'm not paying attention to my surroundings? So I'm like, you do a gamble, and you hope that he didn't let You could just look and see if he hasn't left the room yet. Um, but anyways, Zarin, wait. The wraiths. What do we got to do about them? You say. Your gamble pays off, as Zarin quickly turns around and runs back to your bedside. Interesting. Okay. So... He did immediately, like, run back in when I mentioned the wraiths. So this actually does give me the opportunity to, like, ask him about the wraiths. So I'm going to point out to Zarin. The Dark Star Squadron clearly was sent to kill me. I am not naive. Even though I don't know how to spell naive. I am. Wait, what? Hold on. <laughs> when you like really, really don't know how to spell naive? I am not naive. I think I'm using it right. I just don't fully remember who I am. It is also clear to me that you didn't want the wraiths to 
to collect my body. For whatever reason. And in order to prevent them from collecting my body. You took me away. Well, I guess you rescued me. And allowed me to heal. And then I'm going to ask Zarin. So. What is the Dark Star Squadron's relationship with the Wraiths? Because that actually just seems to be like the pressing question right now. And this will kind of determine like, I think this will answer the biggest question that I have. Well, the relationship is complicated. Zarin replies. How so? You ask. And let's just keep that rolling. <laughs> Excuse me. Also, that's the wrong there. I'll correct that after it loads up the next. Actually, I think I can correct it while it's loading it. Yeah, I sure can. And Engine 2 will mess up stuff like that sometimes. Well, the Wraiths used to be an ally to the Dark Star Squadron. But due to several incidents, they are no longer allies, Zarin explains. What kind of incidents, you ask? It would be easier to show you than to tell you. Hmm. Says Zarin. Interesting. So the Wraiths and the Dark Star Squadron used to work together, but for whatever reason, the Wraiths are now against the Dark Star Squadron? So, hmm. I guess I would, like, say to Zarin. So, <sighs> wouldn't the Wraiths be on my side? Oh, actually, no, that isn't what I would ask. I would ask, so what did the Wraiths want with my body? And why did the Dark Star Squadron feel like it was necessary to rescue me from the Wraiths and allow me to heal? Oh, wait, I totally asked him a question. Yeah, I don't know why I said say instead of ask. Let's see. Saren says, the wraiths are collectors. Um, and then the game had me said, wait, so they're basically in the business of stealing things, you ask? I'm not going to say that. I'm going to get rid of where uh, the AI like railroaded me. So the wraiths were going to collect me. Okay, so I'm going to say to Zarin. So the Dark Star Squadron wants to kill me. And the wraiths want to collect me. Um, and then I'm going to ask Zarin, why doesn't the Dark Star Squadron? Hmm. Actually, yeah, I'm still confused. Uh, I'm going to add that to the earlier part where I'm saying something to Zarin. Um, I'm still confused on why uh, the Dark Star Squadron is now nursing me back to health. You ask Zarin, um, if the Dark Star Squadron doesn't want the Wraiths 
I don't know if Wraith should be capitalized or not. I feel like I haven't been capitalizing it, but they seem like they are like a race of beings or whatever. So I'm going to capitalize. It sounds like a proper noun. If the Dark Star Squadron doesn't want the wraiths to collect my body, that still doesn't explain why the Dark Star Squadron is now trying to help me heal my injuries. Why is that? Yeah, so I'm gonna like question Zarin. Because I'm still trying to get to the bottom of it. Like, I can understand the concept of like the Dark Star Squadron doesn't like the wraiths, but I still don't really understand why um like the Dark Star Squadron would then suddenly be like, and now we're gonna help you or whatever. Zarin sighs and says the AI has been doing this a lot more recently where when a character is about to say something they don't fill it in Zarin sighs and says it is complicated and if I tell you you must promise never to tell anyone why would I promise that I don't even know what your plan is you say Zarin says if you agree to the condition then I will tell you my plan okay so I currently don't see anything to lose by, like, agreeing to the promise. Um, so I'm going to agree to Zarin's promise not to tell anyone the secrets that Zarin is about to disclose. I mean, to be honest, you should phrase that as, like, you promise not to speak speak aloud to anyone because then you can do the stretch promise thing where it's like later I tell someone because I write it down or I communicate it telepathically or something like that and it's like well I never spoke it I didn't like break my word or whatever let's see Zarin says very well the race want to collect your body because mortals who have been killed and come back from the dead make the best recruits for their armies. What? You say in surprise? That you say in surprise? Hush! Keep your voice down, Zarin demands. Hold on a second. Um, I'm going to ask Zarin. So if revived mortals make the best soldiers for the race, and I'm a god, then, if the wraiths collected me, would I become a super soldier? Like a wraith-like super soldier? You. I would imagine so, Zarin says. You say, then I want to be collected by the wraiths. <laughs> Yo, that's, you probably wouldn't want to say that to Zarin, even if that is how you feel. Um, so my question is, I'm going to ask Zarin. Excuse me. Okay, so I understand why the Dark Star Squadron wouldn't want me to be collected by their enemies and turned into a super soldier. Yeah, and turned into a Wraith super soldier. Tasked with wiping them out. I still don't understand why the Dark Star Squadron now is trying to help me heal. You know what I mean? Like, even though you don't want me to join the wraiths, 
that doesn't explain why you no longer want me dead. Why do you no longer want to kill me? And I think it's important for my character to be asking these questions. You know, there's no reason for me to trust the Dark Star Squadron considering how this journey started. Zarin says, I never wanted to kill you in the first place. Wait a minute. General wanted to kill me and retrieve my body for himself, and he's in charge of the Dark Star Squadron's military operations. So why didn't he retrieve my body for himself? Is a very specific kind of lore question that it railroaded me into asking, and I'm not even sure if my character would possess the knowledge that's being disclosed. So Zarin claims that he never wanted to kill me, and he's like, the general killed you kind of thing. I wasn't going to kill you. So I'm going to ask Zarin. Um, why does General want to kill me? But not you. So Zarin's coming from the position of like, well, I wasn't going to kill you in the first place. I don't know what... <sighs> then what does Zarin want? Zarin says, the general has his reasons. I'm not aware of them, and he and I do not see eye to eye on many issues, so we don't talk about it. You stare at Zarin with confusion. That's kind of interesting, like the idea that like, not everyone in the Dark Star Squadron are necessarily on the same page on certain issues, including things that are like fairly important. So I'm going to ask Zarin, so if you weren't there to kill me, What did you originally want to do with me? Like, what was his goal in the first place? Saren looks around and says, Nothing. Nothing, you say, confused? I wasn't sent to kill you or capture you or anything, Zarin admits. Okay, so you th think you're starting to understand what's happening. Um, you say, so the general wants to kill me for whatever reason. Um, and you don't have any vested interest in me other than to keep me from becoming a wraith super soldier. Yeah, like that actually just sounds like what's happening. Because once Zarin establishes the fact that like, you know, I'm not actually like here to kill you kind of thing. I believe that's interesting. Uh, Zarin nods his head in agreement. You think about all the things that Zarin just admitted to you. Okay. Um, I am thinking about all the things that Zarin just admitted to me. So the general and Zarin, and also, they see, even the game calls him the general. Why name a character general? Because I just feel like that's the consequence of it, is that people are going to just call him the general, like a title. Oh, crap, even I did it. Even I called him the general. Okay, so cool. Um, I'm going to ask Zarin, what is going to happen to me? Well, actually, before I ask what's going to happen to me, uh, I'm going to ask, how did you get me aboard the Dark Star if the General wants me dead? That actually is like a really good question. Like, the general, it doesn't sound like he died or anything. Like, is it, doesn't he still want to kill me? And isn't he likely still on the ship? Zarin thinks about the question for a moment. I actually didn't think about that before I acted. 
I guess I just assumed if the general wanted you dead, he would have already had you killed, Zarin admits. What? Um, you sigh and say, so you, well, you sigh and ask in an exasperated tone. So you took me on board the dark, well, I guess you, so you took me aboard, you probably wouldn't say on board. So you took me aboard the Dark Star. So that I could heal, even though General is also on the Dark Star and wants to kill me. And wants to kill me? You then say, if you leave this room, I imagine general will <laughs> appear and strike me down i am not safe aboard the same vessel because i still don't know what kind of like thing i'm on as general like i, I just don't need to be in the same ship submarine spaceship whatever as a guy who like literally cut me in half at the beginning of the story. Hmm. So I wonder if like General left and Zarin was like watching me like heal myself or whatever. Hmm. Well, I guess you'll just have to stay in this room then, Zarin responds. You give Zarin a bewildered look and ask, for how long? <laughs> Zarin shrugs his shoulders. Until the Dark Star is destroyed? Until it leaves this galaxy? Hell, I don't know. It isn't my ship. And I'll make the rules. <sighs> you are slowly beginning to realize just how far, <laughs> just how little Zarin thought through this plan. You say to Zarin, sorry, but I can't stay here. This room, yeah, like, the door to this room isn't going to stop an eight-foot-tall <laughs> cyborg god from coming to finish the job he already started. Get me to an escape pod. And let me get as far away from general as possible. Yeah, like, I actually just shouldn't stay aboard the ship. My mission should be just to stay alive. I don't even know what powers I have other than, like, my slow regenerative ability. Zarin is a little taken aback by your suggestion. An escape pod? And then what? Land on some backwater planet and hope the locals don't eat you? You respond with a shrug of your shoulders. It beats staying here. <laughs> Zarin sighs and says, okay, this is actually kind of interesting. Like, I like the direction it's going in. Because Zarin's like, you have no idea, like, where you're going to end up. Like, if you just get shot into space. He's like, it could be worse. I don't think it's a good idea for you to leave. I could get in trouble. I'm gonna to say to Zarin, you should have considered that 
before you grabbed my body and took me aboard the Dark Star. You know I can't stay here. I need to go. What's interesting is that, like, Zarin isn't entirely a friendly. He's like, I actually don't have, like, a vested interest in you. All right, Zarin sighs. I'll get you an escape pod, but you need to hurry up and heal in there, because when I release you, it's going to be a race to the pod before General catches up to us. Oh, gosh. So I'm going to say... So as soon as you open up that door, the general is going to be hunting us? You wonder if this room is somehow... Yeah, hold on. You wonder if general... And I keep calling him the general. Uh... It's really hard not to call him the general, because it's just a word. You made his name a word that's normally a title. You wonder if general can has some form of cybernetic sensors that are blocked by this room. That might explain why the general hasn't found you yet. And why, as soon as you leave the room, Zarin believes that the general will be hunting you down. And that's actually kind of like an interesting idea. That would also explain why Zarin thinks this room is safe. Zarin nods and gets up to leave the room. Yeah, this room blocks our sensors. As soon as the door opens, he'll be able to track us down. Zarin gets out his keycard and slides it across the door's panel. Shit. You get up and clutch your midsection. You can feel that. You can still feel your body slowly trying to heal itself. The more you concentrate on healing, the faster your injuries repair themselves. But right now, all you can concentrate on. Is your survival. You get ready to follow Zarin for what will be a race for your life. Yeah, a race for your very life. Zarin slides his key card and the door opens. Just as Zarin turns to look at you, General slams the butt of his axe into the side of Zarin's head. The sheer force of the blow causes Zarin's skull to shatter as his brains are scrambled by the impact. Oh my gosh. Okay, so this isn't a race to the escape pod. General's just already here. And he's got an axe now. He's an eight foot cyborg god question mark. Zarin alluded to the idea that he might be a god. General might also be a god. I don't know. With an axe that... By the way, yeah, actually, that's crazy. General didn't just slam the butt of his axe into the side of Zarin's head. When you take into consideration that Zarin's a god, regardless of whether or not, like, General's a god, he's strong enough to, like, one-hit kill a god. That being said, he did do that to me as well, though I was able to regenerate. I actually don't know if Zarin could regenerate his head from that or not. His brains were scrambled, and if it takes concentration in order to, like, regenerate, then probably not. Um, that actually is very sickening to, like, imagine that happening and imagining Zarin's 
skull blowing up. It's one thing to get your own body cut in half and you already have to think about like the existential thoughts of like death. And it's another to see like another person's like brains like blow up like that. Um, so you feel sick to your stomach. Seeing Zarin's head explode. You wonder how strong General truly is. If he is able to one hit kill gods. You imagine that Zarin can't regenerate from that blow, considering the fact. That regeneration requires concentration. You then consider. Well, nah, nah. I was trying to think, like, maybe there's an alternate way where it makes sense or something, but I'm like, nah. Like, if you can kill gods, and if that's what General was trying to do, then I, I don't know. He, he, it's probably not a thing that you can, like, regenerate from. Zarin's body falls to the ground with a thud, and you realize that General now has a sight set on you. You didn't need to regenerate your wounds anymore, but from the way General is moving, it looks like he wants to finish this fight right now. Ooh, hold on. It says you didn't need, but it probably meant to say you don't need, which means I'm, like, fully healed, finally. So... Um, you are relieved and terrified at the same time. You are glad that your wounds are finally healed. But you are afraid that the general, with a single attack, will be able to kill you like he did Zarin. Okay. Your adrenaline rushes, and you begin to think of possible solutions. You remember that General mentioned before that you were once the world's most feared god. You think that maybe you can play that up in order to intimidate General into standing down. You say in a deep voice. You may have caught me off guard before. But now I am healed and aware of my status as the world's most feared god. You were able to take down a hmm, lower level deity like Zarin with ease. But I assure you that if you try to fight me now, you will surely be destroyed. Hmm. You stand with your arms wide open and approach General with determination and confidence. You have to try your best to hide your fear and to appear as <laughs> and appear as you once were as the most feared god of this world. Well, I guess of the most feared god yeah, just say of the most feared God, as the most feared God. <laughs> I was trying to figure out how to phrase that. 
So that's my plan. I'm going to go for like an intimidation tactic. I'm going to use the general's like own words against him. General smiles and says, Interesting. I was right about you. You truly are the former god of borders. He continues smiling as he transforms his arm into a blade and attempts to cut you in half. Oh gosh. So it only like hyped him up. You quickly attempt to duck under the general's attack and kick him in the chest. Also, it's not the general. I, I keep wanting to do that. Also, he's able to turn his arms into blades. Feats. Feats. <laughs> also, he has an axe. So he has like an axe, and he has like a blade arm, and he's like an eight foot tall cyborg. Maybe a god, maybe not a god. I'm actually not sure. Um, your worst fears are realized. You thought that you would scare the general into standing down. But in reality, you only psyched him up. He seems to want to slay you, like, want to slay you, specifically because you are the most feared god. You don't know if General just wants to prove himself to be stronger than you, or if he wants to kill you for some other reason. So this is actually really cool. I'm liking like where the story's gone so far. So we're only like 46 minutes in to this two hour special, or not even like a full hour in. The General laughs and blocks your punch with ease. What? I tried to kick him. I tried to kick him. Change that to kick. It seems that he was toying with you the whole time. He uses his free hand to grab your wrist and fling you at a tree. We're in a... We're in a spaceship. Retry? Reach, it messed up like multiple things. His blade scrapes against your skin. It burns and you feel the coolness of your own blood running down your chest. You release a quick roar of pain as you grab General's arm with both hands and throw your entire weight into a twist. Oh, am I going to try and break his arm? That's interesting. Break his cybernetic god arm. To be honest, his arms do seem to be his main weapons. General's arm breaks with a snap and he cries out in pain. You take a few steps back as General continues to grip his broken arm. You see an opportunity and swing your foot into General's knee. There's a loud pop and crackle as his knee bends the wrong way. Hmm. You can't tell if the General is fairly fragile or if you are just incredibly strong. You say to the, well, you say to General. Oh man, I said the General like earlier in that same first like, statement. You say to General. I've crippled you. Stand down and explain yourself. You demand General. Yeah, you demand General tell you why he wants to kill you. Hmm. So this is actually like pretty interesting. General doesn't respond in words. Instead, he continues to try and attack you. He hobbles forward on one good leg and attempts to slash you with his talons. You easily dodge out of the way and trip him again. This time he slips excuse me, his face into the hard floor. You stomp on the back of General's head and push your weight down on his skull. You say, I 
won't ask again. Tell me why you want to kill me. Now. Okay. So the tables have turned. The game was like, no, nah, you can kind of throw hands with the general. You just haven't been given the opportunity yet. Ooh. General Skull crunches under your foot as he cries out in pain. He stops fighting you for just a moment to catch his breath and gather his courage. You take a quick glance at Zarin to see him sitting quietly in the corner, watching. Interesting. So Zarin is able to regenerate? Even from having his skull bashed? Then what is the general going to say? This is, this is actually kind of interesting. I'm surprised that Zarin was able to come back to life. So you don't need to concentrate? General says, The Dark Star Squadron hunts down and kills all the false gods that masquerade as the real thing. It is our sworn duty to hunt you down and end your life. Hmm. I'm going to say to the general, well, sorry, say to general, as you kick him in the face, clearly there is nothing false about my godhood. Let's say, let's say that you coldly say to the general as you kick him in, in the face, Clearly, there's nothing false about my godhood. You were surprised to see that Zarin was able to regenerate from General bashing his skull in. You ask Zarin, can gods even be killed if we can regenerate? from being cut in half and having our brains scrambled. Yeah, like, oh crap, I didn't put our brains. Uh, I was typing too fast. I can fix that. Zarin coughs up blood but manages to respond. There are powerful gods who can kill other gods. Those are called demigods. Only natural born gods can become demigods though. So you can't. Huh. Why are, yeah, that didn't sound like the right term. Retry that, call them something else if you're gonna do that. I'm fine with that explanation, but it's kind of weird. Zarin looks up at you and tells you, it takes time to regenerate. If you kill a god before they complete their regeneration, they will die like a mortal. General is on his knees now, and he's managed to shift his jaw back into place. Okay. Interesting. So Zarin's like, if it's not a fatal blow, if they don't literally die from the hit, they can come back. So it's, it's just hard. It sounds like stuff that would kill someone with enough time wouldn't kill them because they have like a godlike, like a literal godlike healing factor. It's not godlike, it's just a divine healing factor. Okay, it's good to know. Um, so when General killed Zarin earlier, it wasn't actually a full on like oh, he's dead, dead, I'm trying to, like, kill him for real kind of thing. Or it could have been. I mean, I don't know. There's no way to know if bashing someone in the side of the head with, like, an axe would, like, fully kill them kind of thing. Okay. So, yeah, I honestly don't know where to go from here. If General is, like, getting back up, uh, I'm going to attempt to intimidate general and yell bow down like that's all i'm going to say like <laughs> like i'm not going to have him like 
get back up. General looks up. Ooh. General looks up at you through the blood running from his broken nose and swollen eyes. He cackles and sputters blood as he says. <laughs> ha. You really think you're a god. You tell General. I don't just think it. I know it. Yeah, like, at, at this point, I'm not really, like, taking the general shit. I'm going to say to the Dark Star Squadron... Well, I guess I'm going to ask Zarin. You mentioned earlier that you didn't want to kill me. It sounds like the Dark Star Squadron wants to kill supposedly false gods because they pretend to be real gods. Did you not want to kill me? Because I didn't remember that I was a god and therefore wasn't acting like a god? Because that actually makes a lot of sense, to be honest. Do, 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 do. Zarin sits in his corner and watches the two of you. He doesn't seem to be paying attention to the fight, or at least not actively. He just sits there quietly and watches. No, he, like, responded to a thing earlier. Uh, so I hit retry. Zarin thinks for a moment before answering. Um, I'm just going to put a period at the end of that. And I'm just going to hit enter. Because I still don't fully know why Zarin didn't want to kill me. It's more along the lines of you have not proven that you are a god. You claim to be one. Without proof, the Dark Star will continue to try to kill you. Hmm. Actually, that's kind of interesting, because that doesn't actually explain why he doesn't want to kill me. You say to Zarin. Well, I guess I'm going to ask Zarin. Well, no, I guess I'm just going to say to Zarin. The fact that you don't want to kill me and the fact that you called me a fellow god earlier I think shows that you believe that I am a god hmm. yeah you think the reason why general and Zarin don't get along is because Zarin believes you are a god while General doesn't. I mean, that would explain a lot. Also, I still don't understand why the Wraiths turned against the Dark Star Squadron. Hmm. Whoa, what? You take a step back and do something you remember doing in the past when a crowd of adulating fans pushed you too far. You blast Zarin with a bolt of pure divine energy, turning his chest into charred bone and bloody flesh. Hmm. I'm going to say to Zarin, one of my memories returned just a moment ago. That's how I knew I could shoot divine energy. And then I'm going to ask Zarin and General, having witnessed that feat, how can either of you accuse me of not being a god? Uh, 
um, for one, that memory was really dark. The idea of like blasting a crowd of adulating fans um, with divine energy sounds crazy. General is staring at you, and Zarin's smoking corpse and all. He points at a gnarled oh he points a gnarled finger at you as he says, "Ooh, you are the god of dead gods, the god of gods." Okay, so I've, I believe I've proven myself then. Let's see, I'm going to say to General, um, I made a promise to Zarin that I no longer need to keep. There's no sense in keeping the secrets of dead men. Zarin told me about the fact that the Wraiths and the Dark Star Squadron used to be allies. But he didn't explain why they are now enemies. You ask General, why, um, are the Dark Star Squadron and the Wraiths now adversaries? So far, the story's coming together nicely. Also, it mentioned Zarin's corpse. Did my Divine Energy Blast, like, one-shot Zarin? But on like a whole other level than when like general one shots a god. When general one shots a god, the god just like regenerates. When I like divine energy one shot a god, they turn into a corpse. He's dead. Let's see. General sighs and says, It's a long story. You tell him, Tell me anyway. General begins the tale of the Dark Star and the Wraiths. Okay, yeah, hit me up. Tell me the story, General. It's story time. In that lore. In that flashback lore. 500 years ago, when the wraiths were known as the Dark Star Knights, they were allies of the Dark Star. The Dark Star at the time was an honorable organization whose members adhered to a code of honor and justice. Ooh, yeah, straight up lore. We're getting that exposition. Exquisite exposition. <laughs> Let's hit it up. So they kind of sound like a, a guild of knights now, like very specifically knights. Earlier they mentioned like the Dark Star, the Dark Star uniform or whatever. So I'm curious if the Dark Star uniform is like a suit of like armor with like their guild symbol on it or something like that. Maybe their coat of arms. The leader of the Dark Star then was a man named Dor Lenz. The race leader was a woman named Lenore. Lenore had recently discovered the ability to use magic, which is rare for humans. Okay. Which is rare for humans. But... Is Lenore a human woman who leads the wraiths? Is the wraith, like, are the wraiths an organization? Or are they, like, a species? I kind of assumed they were a species. Now I'm starting to think they're an organization. Especially when you say the wraiths were known as the Dark Star Knights. That shows that, like, it's not like their species name changed. It was more like they changed their name I guess to no longer be affiliated with the Dark Star. And it also sounds like the race were like underlings to the Dark Star. She kept this ability a secret from everyone except Dor Lenz, who she told in strict confidence. Lenz loved Lenore, and he also feared for her safety if others knew that she could use magic. Interesting. So the Dark Star's did not seem to be like a fan. I guess the Dark Stars and the Dark Star Knights were not a fan of magic users. Maybe since this takes place like 500 years ago, 
it was some kind of like witch hunt situation. And it's like, if Lenore was outed for being like a magic user, then she'd be killed. Um, it also seems kind of interesting that if the Dark Star is like the bigger organization that's over the Dark Star Knights, which is like the smaller organization, even though they're both leaders, there seems to be some power dynamic between Dor Linz and Lenore, where it seems kind of gross that they would be in like a relationship. You shouldn't really do that because that kind of messes up hierarchies. You end up with this weird situation that's currently happening now. Or I guess that happened 500 years ago. Um, so far, I'm really digging the exposition that the AI is doing a good job of continuing the story. Linz decided to ban the use of magic by any Dark Star member or ally. Lenora agreed out of love for Dor Linz. So, <sighs> Linz is afraid that if like other people know that Lenore can use magic, that Lenore will die. But Linz also made it like illegal to use magic. So it wasn't illegal to use magic before, for whatever reason. Like, so it wasn't a witch hunt thing. It's not like they were like hunting magic users. But now it feels like it is. I guess for whatever reason, he was afraid that if the others knew she could use magic, they would turn against her. But I almost feel like by banning the use of magic, he made it worse. Like now he's made it like a punishable offense. The rest of the Dark Star disagreed with this decision, so Linz made an example of them, punishing those who disagreed harshly. Interesting. Okay, so it's rare for humans to be able to use magic abilities. Dor Linz is like, I fear that if like others knew that you could use magic Lenore, that they would kill you, and I love you, and in order to make sure that you don't use magic and you don't get caught because maybe that's why he's putting it as a rule for everyone. He's like, nobody uses magic. And it's a way to like enforce that Lenore can't show her powers to others so that um, she stays safe and no one like kills her. That being said, it sounds like Dor Linz has a problem. Also, his name is Dor Linz, which kind of sounds like Dor Hinge. Like, it, it almost sounds like a real a real word. Anyways, it sounds like Dor Linz has a problem with magic users, specifically. But he loves Lenore, so he's like, you're the exception. Like, I'm fine with you being a magic user. Don't use magic, though. He's like, don't do it. <laughs> he's like, I don't fuck with it. So I think that's the situation. It's just, he doesn't like people using magic. He thinks other people don't like people using magic. And he's like intolerant of it. He only can tolerate it for Lenore because he loves her. So, so far, this is interesting. Keep it going. I like that they call him Linz sometimes, calling him by his last name. Linz and Lenore. He even had one Dark Star member executed for arguing with him about the ban on Matt. He didn't even use it, <laughs> it was just the ban that like pissed him off. The bans on magic and dissent made the Dark Star a more honorable but stagnant organization. So, the bans on magic and dissent made them more honorable but also more stagnant. So, I guess they're honorable in the idea where it's like we don't use magic and tricks against our opponents. You know, we always decide our battles using our own, like, ability outside of the use of magic kind of thing. Um, but then it also sounds like they couldn't grow where other organizations maybe did utilize magic and allowed them to like expand by forcing magic to be like illegal. You essentially end up with a situation where it's like, oh, well, we can never develop into like using magic to help us. It'd be like if you had an organization that banned the use of technology, you couldn't use technological innovation to grow your organization any further. Um, now I'm curious, because I can kind of see where the split's going to happen, you know, where the Dark Stars and the Dark Star Knights split off due to this disagreement on the use of magic. But I'm a little confused, because the general can, like, change—well, the general is a cyborg, so I guess he's not really using magic, per se. 
And Zarin's a god, so it's more like it's his natural ability to resurrect. So maybe they're not using magic. So I think what's going to happen is that the Dark Star are going to end up being like, we are the side that like ban magic and we're like, we don't use magic kind of thing. We don't vibe with magic anymore. And then the wraiths are going to be the side that's like, well, we rebelled against the Dark Stars and we use magic. That's where I think the story is going to go, but I, I don't know. So let's hit enter and find out. I mean, this is interesting for sure. Uh, I'm definitely vibing with it. This is like a story within a story kind of thing. Big lore dump. Lore dumpies. Eventually, the Dark Star left the path of honor completely. The wraiths continued to oppose the Dark Star and anyone who did business with it. They were bold and relentless, even when they only numbered in the dozens. Interesting. So it became... It's interesting. So they lost their honor, I guess? It's a it's an honor dispute, not a magic ban dispute. Because I thought it was going to be based on the banning of magic. So you're telling me that they banned magic and that caused tension within the organization. The organization was honorable, but it couldn't grow. And then from there, they eventually like lost their honor. And the wraiths are like... The Wraiths are the honorable side, and the Dark Star Squadron are like the dishonorable side. You stop the general and say, and ask, why are you a member of the Dark Stars and not a member of the Wraiths? By your own account, the Dark Stars are dishonorable. And the Wraiths are fighting against the Dark Stars' dishonor. Yeah, the Dark Stars' dishonorable action. going to move that apostrophe. So, the general sputters and coughs as he drinks from his flask. <laughs> or whatever. I don't know. He has a flask, apparently. He says, in his old man voice, What? You ask a lot of questions. You tell him, I'm curious about the world. Yeah, I mean, I don't remember anything. What do you think I'm going to do? I'm like an amnesiac, and you're giving me a lore dump that stretches back 500 years. Um, I have nothing else to be invested in. Because <laughs> this is like the only thing I've encountered because I've been like catapulted into like a new world. He finishes drinking. Uh, gulp, gulp from his flask before saying, I was going to make gulp sounds, and I'm like, I don't think I have any liquid in my throat. Like, maybe I need to drink some water. I'm like, I don't think I could do a gulp if I tried. I joined the Dark Stars because I'm an idiot who trusted the wrong people. <laughs> you ask him, what do you mean? He says, I'm sorry, but I can't explain further. I've said too much already. Interesting. So, I kind of like that, to be honest. So, you think to yourself, General must have gotten in too deep um, into the Dark Stars. And by the time he learned that he was on the wrong side, it was too late. He likely 
has just been embracing it because he doesn't really have a choice. Have a choice otherwise. Hmm. And then outside of the thought bubble, I'm going to write, you can feel a tinge of regret in the general's words. You, ah, oh, crap, I just called him the general. You ask general, if given the opportunity, would you switch sides and join the wraiths? So, to be honest, this is pretty cool. <laughs> the general says, I'm too old to go through another transformation. Um, and I can't really tell if the general means that as like a literal, like physical transformation, like to join the race, you like must be physically transformed. And he's like, my old body can't handle it. Or if it's more like a metaphor, like he's so set in his ways, there's no way for him to truly change. <laughs> Excuse me. You ask, are you afraid of death? The general takes off his cloak and hood to reveal a metal box on the left half of his skull. For anyone who's trying to draw the general, I hope you made sure to give him a cloak and hood for all the previous scenes that somehow doesn't show the fucking metal box on the left half of his skull. I guess we could only ever see half of his face for like all these scenes. <laughs> and I hope that if you did draw him where you could see his face, that you put that metal box on it. Uh, so he's an eight foot tall cyborg who may or may not be a god, but at the very least seems almost god level, question mark. Not really, because divine energy just seems better than him. <laughs> um, who regrets being a member of the Dark Stars and should have joined the Wraiths, but he trusted the wrong people is like his own words um kind of cool i like it when you can like learn a whole bunch about like characters um i would love to know why zarin was a member of the dark stars but i killed him in order to like settle the conflict with a general 42 minutes see why why two hours <laughs> hmm I'm going to say to General, I already knew you were a cyborg. If you, yeah, like, if you can be repaired, then anything is possible. You can constantly upgrade and become better. Don't sell yourself short. If you think you've chosen the wrong path, it is not too late to adjust your course. You offer the general a hand. You offer the general a handshake. You say, if you agree to work alongside me, I can help to redeem you. Okay, going in an interesting direction. The sci fantasy two hour epic with a whole bunch of lore and like different organizations. The multiverse was even a part of it. You can see the conflict in his eyes. He wants to agree, but he also wants to be cautious. He says, What if I'm not redeemable? You reply, Then nothing will happen.
Um, so I'm going to get rid of where it railroaded me, and I'm going to say all are redeemable in the eyes of this God. All are redeemable in the eyes of this guy. So now it's time for a 40 minute general redemption story. Bow, 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 bow. The general shakes your hand. He says, I'll try my best to help, but no promises. You tell him, that's all I can ask for. Let's see. It said you continue on the road and happen upon a town. You call it Nightfall. I mean, I don't think we're in a car. We're aboard the Dark Star, which apparently has escape pods, which implies some kind of, like, vessel that would have escape pods. Probably not a vehicle that would be, like, on a road. Um, I'm going to ask General, where is this Dark Star ship headed? So that's one thing. We've been like traveling this whole time and we've had no idea like where we're going. He says, I don't know, but we're supposed to meet it in the sky. You say, let's go outside. I want to assess the situation for myself. The general asks you, is it true that you can fly? Wait, what do you mean we're supposed to meet it in the sky? Hold on. Retry. We're on the ship. Okay, so it keeps acting like we're not on the ship in its responses. So I'm going to change it to where is the Dark Star ship we are aboard headed? Like, I want to clarify that we're on the ship. He tells you, We're headed towards the capital city of the Empire, but we just passed it, and we are heading towards the second largest city of the Kingdom of Nowhere. He says, It's called the Underground City. It's an entire city that exists within a cavern. And then, of course, I'm going to have to ask him, like, the obvious question. Um, why are the Dark Stars heading to the underground city? Because now that we don't vibe with um, the Dark Stars, we should probably stop whatever they're trying to do. Hmm. He tells you, we aren't. You say, what do you mean? The general says, they are not our allies anymore. I don't know why they are heading towards the underground city, but it is definitely not to help them. Well, what? Okay, so I'm actually confused by what he said. Because it's like, why are we heading there? It's like, we're not heading there. And I'm like, what do you mean we're not heading there? And then he's like, they're not our allies, so I don't know why we're going there, but it's not to help them. But we are going there. That Like, it's a weird description. So I'm going to hit retry on that. The general says, we are attempting to make allies with the kingdom of nowhere. You ask him, what do you hope to accomplish? He tells you, the Dark Stars want to convince the kingdom of nowhere to join us in a fight against the Empire. The Dark Stars? Hmm. I'm going to um, ask General. So the Dark Stars are at odds with the Empire. Here we go. With the Empire and 
with the wreaths. So that's like a whole other can of worms. It sounds like being on a Dark Star ship is just dangerous in general. Like we should probably leave the ship. The general says, that's correct. You say, I see. We were once called to fight them. We haven't heard from them. Yet. No, I don't remember anything. My character can't say stuff like, oh, like I knew, I know stuff. I don't know anything. That's kind of the whole point. So I'm going to say, say to general, since we are now against the dark stars, that means that we can find allies in both the empire and the wraiths. Let's take a couple of escape pods down into the underground city. We need to get away from and distance ourselves from the dark stars. Okay. So it's time for the redemption. You tell the general, we are taking an escape pod to a city that's called the Empire. Wait, what? No. I th no, we're just going to take the escape pods into the city below. You say, if all goes well, we can convince the Kingdom of Nowhere to join our side. We can also request the Empire sends military support. You look at the screen and see a planet that is now close. It's covered in clouds and surrounded by asteroids. Okay, interesting. I kind of like this, like, new direction. So we're going to the underground city, not just to distance ourselves from the Dark Stars, but also to say, if the Dark Stars want the Kingdom of Nowhere as an ally, that implies that they're, like, a neutral party currently. They don't actively work with the Empire or the Wraiths. So if we can get there first by jettisoning, by jettisoning, hmm, by jettisoning, I don't know if I'm saying it right, by leaving the ship via escape pod before the ship lands, then we could maybe talk to like the king of nowhere and get him to join us and turn against the dark stars. And the dark stars wouldn't even see it coming. Okay, so that actually is kind of cool. I'm going to say, um, lead me to the escape pods. We need to use them to get to the king of nowhere before the dark stars do. If we can convince nowhere to change from a neutral kingdom to a kingdom on our side, we can catch the Dark Stars off guard and defeat them while they're here. Yeah, we have all this insider knowledge. Also, it's interesting that Zarin and general were at odds with one another beforehand um well no we it's not weird because we know why it's because zarin believed me to be a god and general didn't and that kind of explains why they'd be at odds in general no pun intended let's see you continue moving through the halls of the ship you're a loud noise and see one of the escape pods launch you're glad to see that you're able to launch them the screens show that there are pursuers, but they are still far behind you. Wait, what? So I'm moving through the halls of the ship. I hear a loud noise and I see a pod launch, but I'm not in the pod. Then it's like, you're glad that you're able to launch the pods. So it's like you launch the pods that you weren't in. And then there are screens that show that there are pursuers, but they're still far behind you. No, that implies that I'm in the pods. But then how would I see a pod launch if I'm not like in the pod? Like it's kind of confusing. Uh, I'm going to hit retry on that one. 
The general agrees, and both of you head to the escape pods. You use the escape pod to get to the planet. The planet is cold and empty, and you can see other escape pods descending nearby. I'm going to save to general. Oh no. Hmm. The dark stars are also using escape pods. Which means only one of two things. Either the dark stars think there is an emergency where they need to leave the ship or they know about what we are trying to do and are chasing us down to try and stop us. So this is kind of interesting. We're getting some conflict in there. So we have like a solid goal. We have a conflict. The general is equally concerned by this revelation, you, but you both agree that there isn't anything you can do about it. You land the escape pod in the wilderness and begin to make your way towards the underground city. Okay, cool. So you in general rush towards the underground city. In search of the king of nowhere. Excuse me. Well, I guess in search of the castle of the king of nowhere. Because if we can get to the king of nowhere before the dark stars do, then we'll be fine. It seems like we have a head start. You and the general move through the wilderness. It's cold, dark, and bleak. You spot a hill. You can see a castle on top of it. You run towards it in hopes that someone in there can help you. Hmm. So we're making our way toward the underground city, but we haven't entered the underground city. We're still in the wilderness. And then we spot a hill with a castle on top of it. Hmm. You ask General, is the castle of the king of nowhere above ground and on a hill rather than in the underground city? Because yeah, that's kind of weird. Also, it's interesting to imagine that the Kingdom of Nowhere is neutral, even though it's right next to the Empire. The general looks at you, nods, and says, That's correct. Okay, cool. So, if that's correct, uh, then we gotta, like, Autobots roll out. Uh, let's see, you in general head towards the castle of the King of Nowhere. Well, I guess head to the gates. Of the castle of the King of Nowhere. Or maybe you should say approach instead of head to. And if I get into a fight. Uh, I have divine energy beams and the general's a goat. You approach and see two guards standing at the castle gates. They have a flag with the word nowhere written on it. You stop in front of the guards and they stare at you. You ask them, is your king home? And the guards reply, maybe. And then I'm going to say to the guards, hmm. The Kingdom of Nowhere is currently neutral and the conflict that is waging across the multiverse between 
the dark stars, wraiths, and the empire. We have come on behalf of the wraiths and the empire to offer an alliance with the kingdom of nowhere against the dark stars. The dark stars have landed on this planet. If we work together, we could potentially wipe out the dark stars. We would like to speak with your king about this matter. Twenty four minutes. OK, so we got like a full like length television show episode left of this like movie. The guard on the right begins laughing <laughs> and says, we have nothing to say to traitors. The guard on the left begins laughing. You look at General, he shrugs. You realize that General is still wearing a Dark Star uniform. You imagine that the guards called you traitors because they now know that general has changed sides. You say to the guards, general has seen the error of his ways and left the dark stars to join the more honorable cause of the wraiths. We offer your king the ability to do the same and change from a neutral party to a party of honor against the dishonorable threat of the Dark Star Squadron. Okay, so that kind of makes sense. Actually, I uh, like the guard's reaction. You stare at the guards and they stop laughing. They say, leave your weapons at the gate and you can meet our king. You hand over your weapons. One of the guards motions for you to follow him through the gate. You, general, and the guard walk through the walk towards the castle. Hey, I imagine when it's like you hand over your weapons, you hand over like general's axe. I don't think I had any weapons on me, as far as I'm aware. Okay. So I'm going to follow the guard to the throne room of the King of Nowhere. So far, I'm doing pretty good for a person who, like, didn't even remember who they were at, like, the start of this two-hour adventure. And also for someone who was like enemies with the general at first. The throne room is lavishly decorated. There is a red carpet leading up to the thrones. The thrones are in the back on a small platform. There is an old man on the right throne and what appears to be a little girl on the left. Fascinating. I'm going to say to the royalty of nowhere directing it kind of at both of them. General and I have come to ask that the kingdom of nowhere join the honorable side of the wraiths and the empire against the dishonorable Dark Star Squadron. We are aware that the Kingdom of Nowhere 
has taken a neutral position so far in the current conflict. The Dark Star Squadron are on this planet right now. If the Kingdom of Nowhere were to strike against the Dark Star Squadron, they could defeat them here and now. My friend here is named General. He used to be a member of the Dark Stars, until he changed his ways and joined the Honorable Wraiths. Join us, and together we can bring honor to the multiverse. I am sure the Empire would reward you greatly for your help in taking down the Dark Stars. So I'm trying to like offer to them this like solution uh, that'll give them like the favor of the Empire and great honor. The old man sits up and thinks for a few minutes. He says, okay, please, 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 please. Please, 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 please don't try to execute us. Please join our league. Oh, he says something in another language to the girl, who seems to disagree with him, but then nods. The old man says, we will do it. Ooh, I'm going to bow to the royalty of nowhere and thank them for their, hmm, for their pledge to assist the wraiths in the empire. You then tell the royalty of nowhere exactly where you saw the dark stars land, and you let the royalty of nowhere know that the dark stars are on their way to the castle right now. You propose that the nowhere military be mobilized to surround and destroy the Dark Stars and their ship. So let's see how that goes. The old man looks at the girl. They seem to start arguing again, though you do not understand their language. After a few moments, they both nod at you and get off their thrones. They walk toward a door that leads to a balcony. Okay, I wonder if they're about to like call out to their military and like mobilize them. It's also interesting that they don't speak in a language that I understand. They open the door and you follow them outside. Once outside, you see what looks like to be the entirety of the nowhere military. They're all armed and ready for battle. You look at the city. Hmm. You look down from the balcony and you can see into the maze-like caverns dug below that make up the underground city. The view is unexpected and absolutely stunning. You're excited that the kingdom of nowhere has joined your cause. Hmm. 
Hmm. Okay. So let's see how this goes. Do 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 do. The old man raises both his hands into the air. The crowd goes quiet. He speaks loudly, his voice echoing across the cavern, resonating throughout the tunnels. He says something that sounds very kind and grateful. It makes all of the soldiers cheer. Okay, it's interesting that I'm like, it sounds kind and grateful because I don't necessarily understand his language. So they're like, you feel his voice echo and resonate through the tunnels. The tone seems kind and grateful. The soldiers cheer. It's like you have an idea of what he said based off of like the way that he said it, even if you don't understand what he said. That's smart writing. I actually really like that. He says something else, and the entire nowhere military, thousands and thousands of armed men, women, and children, begin to march into the caverns below. You watch as the maze disappears, and the caverns below fill up with people. You're excited. So he has children in his army? That's interesting. That being said, one of the members of, like, nowhere royalty is a little girl. So maybe they're, like, a society that isn't ageist. And they consider, like, people of all ages equals. Because to have, like, a little girl argue with, like, an old man is really fascinating. And for them to be, like, the two, like, leaders of the planet, of the kingdom. Okay, so we have, like, 13 minutes left. You watch in anticipation for the coming battle. You know that soon, the army of nowhere will encounter the dark stars. And you have no idea which side will prevail in the conflict. Which is true. Like, I legitimately don't know what the dark stars are capable of. Excuse me. I am excited to find out. You watch as the old man stands next to you and watches down below. We are in this together, Captain, he says to you. Oh, well, sorry. It probably isn't a question. I said it like it was a question. We are in this together, Captain, he says to you. The girl joins you on the balcony and smiles at you. Then she grabs your hand and holds it. Okay. I honestly don't know what's happening. Do, 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 do. We're just going to keep it rolling. Do, 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 do. I guess I could have nodded or something. It is in that moment, watching the world fall to pieces and two great armies clashing, that you realize something. You realize you're happy. You're just not sure why. Hmm. You think that this feeling of togetherness, of fighting for an honorable cause greater than yourself, is a familiar feeling. You know that there are many memories from your past that are lost to you. But moments like these make you feel like you are doing exactly what you need to be doing. You feel like you belong here. Regardless of whether or not you're actually from this reality. You're actually from this strange new reality. Yeah. So, interesting. 
Like, I, I don't know. I feel like we're almost at a closure point. You realize that if you had to, you'd sacrifice yourself for this world and the people in it. Look at the old man's face, watching as it changes from confusion to shock to horror. He opens his mouth, but no words come out. You look back at the battlefield. The old man's horrified face, making you believe that something must be wrong. You check to see which side is winning the conflict. Hmm. You feel a sudden aura of unease wash over you. As you look over the balcony at the scene below, we got some conflict. <laughs> we got some more conflict. A twist. Did the army fall? What if it's like a bloodbath and like the whole army of nowhere fell? The Dark Star soldiers, dressed in black steel armor with purple cloaks, are decimating the nowhere military. There's thousands of them. You hear a loud shrieking sound from below, and you watch as ghostly spirits start appearing on the battlefield, attacking the living. Oh my goodness. Okay. I'm going to stand on the railing of the balcony and attempt to fire a beam of divine energy at the Dark Star Army in order, well, I guess in an attempt to wipe them all out. You are filled with rage. You, for the first time that you can remember, feel, you, for the first time that you can remember, feel like you belong. And as soon as you as soon as you take hold of that feeling, it seems like fate is trying to rip it away from you. You know what you have to do. At all cost, you must save nowhere and defeat the Dark Star. Okay, so, so far, story seems pretty dope. I'm liking it. A lot of lore, a lot of, like, character development. It's getting crazy. You stare down at the enemies below you. You feel like you're about to laugh. You're so angry and upset. You just want this all to be over with, one way or another. You leap off the balcony and quickly start falling towards the ground. This is it. Whoa. So I just jump down. I jump off of the balcony. I'm going to attempt to strike the ground with a powerful shockwave of divine energy. Hmm. Directed at the Dark Star soldiers. You don't care if you survive this fall. You are willing to transform yourself into a literal holy bomb if it means wiping out the dark stars once and for all. Plus, I can regenerate, so who knows? Like, maybe I do survive the fall. Hmm. You spread your arms out and fall straight down towards the earth, screaming as loud as you can. You'll feel, you, whoo, you feel your body burning up and your skin begins to turn red hot. You scream louder in pain and anger. 
Yo, Judge Bot said this is a death scenario. You were literally screaming as you die. You gained 10 points. Are we going to hit 100 points by the end of this, like, two-hour movie? The sound of the wind burning your lungs feels like hell itself. You close your eyes and clench your teeth as you feel the earth quickly approaching you at terminal velocity. Hmm. I'm going to concentrate on pushing out a wave of divine energy of destructive divine energy toward the dark stars. I gotta wipe them out. This is it. This is like the ending of this like non-canon story. You begin to glow red hot as you can feel your skin burning off of your bones. You continue to scream in agony as you close your eyes, feeling every bone and muscle in your body shatter into pieces due to the sheer speed at which you're traveling toward the ground. Goodness, how far down is like the thing? I'm like descending from the heavens and like burning away trying to become like a divine bomb. The sound of your burning skin sizzle and crackle as tiny meteors in the dead side. What the fuck? The sound of your burning skin sizzle and crackle as tiny meteors in the dead silence of space. What a weird metaphor. Okay. You scream as you feel the crushing force of gravity accelerate you towards the unforgiving ground below. You feel your body breaking. Gosh, the fuck? it's so visceral, visceral, and it's so long. Um, also, I feel like I could probably give a better performance of this like very dramatic death scene. It's like 1.15 a.m. I started this really late. You feel your organs tear and burst apart. You feel the life being squeezed out of you as your soul is crushed by the unstoppable force of the Earth's gravitational pull. You hear a loud, thunderous, crashing sound as thousands of bones snap, shatter, and break all at once. Goodness. You think to yourself. The perfect death of a god is a death done for the salvation of their people. That's that's actually a nice tombstone. <laughs> well, no, why I hit a bracket? When you fuck up, fuck up the formatting. You see a bright white light as your soul is ripped from your body and you float outside of your body and watch as your broken bloody flesh and bones begin to settle on the ground forming a crater. You feel an immense pain in your soul. You check to see if you succeeded in wiping out the dark stars. What if you didn't? That could be the tra- like this story could be a tragedy, a two hour tragedy where you just die and you didn't win. I apparently left a crater. You float there watching the scene play out below you in slow motion. You feel a painful wrenching sensation deep within your soul as you watch the Dark Star General and Zarin burn up into flames, screaming as their flesh is burned off their bones. Uh, do, 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 do. It got confused, I think. Retry? Everything was cool until it specifically said General and Zarin. Let's see. You see your bloody broken body below you. Congratulations, you have just achieved martyrdom and guaranteed a place in heaven. A message appears before your soul. Congratulations, you sacrificed yourself for the betterment of the people of nowhere. Okay. Oh, I got like 44 seconds left. 
Para ba 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 da. So that's the story. This is a very complete story, surprisingly enough, involving me being against the dark stars, and then getting the people who are trying to like kill me to join me, and then mobilizing a military fleet against the dark stars, only to sacrifice my life in order to wipe the dark stars out. And we even got to hear like the full lore of the Dark Stars. We got to hear why the general is the way he is. Um, we got to explore the conflict between like the general and Saren. We got to explore the culture of nowhere and their like interesting like age is no real border society. And we got hints at like Jet Starlight's memories and stuff. Really good, just a solid story. Uh, shout out to King of Craxels on Discord for paying $14 to make this a reality. If you guys have an idea for a video, definitely let me know on our Discord. And if I like your idea, I'll charge you $7 per hour length of the video. So if you want a one hour video, uh, then that's $7, two hours, $14, three hours, $21, etc., etc. Um, and it's a great way for you guys to like help out the channel, sponsor the content, and make sure that you're like getting the videos that you want to see. Also, if you guys just want to help support the channel, feel free to donate to our cash app, link in the description box below. Thank you all once again for watching. This is your host, your friend, your boy, Jump Like the One Only. Log it out and subscribe because I upload AI Dungeon 2 videos every day. Peace, guys. Check it out.